Hey everybody, Anthony here. Um, this is going to be a quick tutorial on GarageBand. Uh, you guys might have it and you played around with it a little bit, but you want to know if it can do more um, or, or just to find out all the options you have within GarageBand to kind of make your project a little better. So this hopefully will help out. So uh, let's get you started so you can get some music going. Uh, what I have right here is a just I, I just put a couple of tracks together. Now the cool thing about GarageBand, it's really user friendly in the case that if you want to just put some music together as background music for like a movie project or something that you're doing it's got loops it's got effects it's got all kinds of instruments and it's ready to go and you literally just bring it up here and draw it out by dragging it out or bringing it back in depending on how how long you actually want it on the timeline so this area is obviously the timeline over here shows you what instruments brought in this is the you know piano editor um, this is really the music editor, um, you know, if, so it could either be like recording at the piano part or um, making your, um, say if you sung vocals in it, um, you would be able to change the pitch um, automatically and make it sound like that auto-tune stuff and uh, whatever your taste is. Um, so I'm just going to play it roughly. This is nothing fantastic. I just left it together for the case of the uh, tutorial, but you'll see how I have it starting and then it builds. So you're just building like a basic idea. This right down here shows you um, the timeline going fast forward. And so forth. I mean, I could keep going. It's got, it's got a cool... It's got a cool sound to it, you know, and, and I'm just building it because I'm doing a couple of videos for my students and uh, I want to have royalty-free background music and so I thought this would be fun to listen to while they're, they're watching videos. Okay, anyway, so let's get started. Let's look at what we got going on. Um, over here, it tells you basically what the instrument is. So I have two different kinds of uh, um, bass uh, tracks here and they build kind of off of each other. But the cool, I, I, I like the idea that it just shows you, you know, what the instrument is. Um, so that way it keeps you kind of organized. Okay, in here, this is the record button. Uh, you definitely don't want to record over this existing track. You want to basically make a new track and make it an instrument track instead of a loop track, which is a like a, um, a pre-recorded instrument that they already have in GarageBand. You want to be able to make an, uh, your own actual instrument, like with the vocal. And if you got a Mac or a PC that has a uh, microphone built in, it automatically detects that. And if you have one of those USB microphones, those are uh, compatible too. You just got to install the software. But sometimes you don't even have to install the software. It depends on the actual microphone. Um, but that's the record. And you need to have that record enabled. So basically you need to hit that button to make sure it's red. And then you could, would come down here and that would automatically start your song. When you're recording, basically make sure that you have your headset plugged in because if not, it'll come through your speakers like mine is coming through now. So you don't want to record everything in the house. You want to be able to be able to just record what you actually want to, um, you know, just uh, isolate that instrument. So if it's vocals, you don't want to have all the background music going. Um, so I hope that makes sense. This is to mute the track or to unmute the track. So if I muted this, it basically will gray out and so I can hear everything else except for that. This will solo it, so if I only want to hear what that is and what it's doing, and if I want to bring it in or bring it out or change the volume or whatever, yeah, I can I can hear it just by itself. This locks it, so I won't touch it, and nothing can. Uh, I, I I'm not able to edit it at all. It just locks it in place. This arrow comes down, and then you're able to have um, capabilities to edit the track volume and the pan. And if you don't know what panning is, it's basically just taking the music going from the left. Uh, to the right of the speakers. So it's kind of a cool feature because if you have like a drum set or and you want to have like the toms go, you, it's kind of cool to have like that kind of 3D sound. So um, if you're able to do editing like that, it would be pretty cool. And, and sometimes I've seen people have a rhythm guitar and a lead guitar, you know, on each track. So that's pretty cool to have too. Um, and how you do it is basically is you go to the volume and you just click and then you click and drag and you can just edit the volume as you want by clicking and, and, and dragging and making points. 
All right. Um, let me get rid of those. And then panning is basically if I wanted to take this, I'm going to make a start marker. I'm going to say, okay, I want it to go from the left to the right to the left to the right, which makes this kind of like 3D warping sound. That's pretty cool. You know, it just depends on, on what your taste is. But the, the neat thing is you have the option to do it. Uh, let's see. This is, um, if you don't want to do that through, uh, you know, editing wise, you can actually just say, I just want this track to go all the way to the left period, you know, and that just, that controls uh, that track here. Um, and then I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just dialing this up and down. That's all I'm doing. This is your volume. And, uh, you see that it, I, I had the red button on. So it's picking up my, my sound through the microphone. Um, if I didn't do that, <clears throat> then it would be gone. This is the actual volume for that actual track. And that's basically it for this area. And uh, this is your timeline. So if I was going to come in here and say, uh, I want this to go for a little longer, I can actually go to the top right, and that will create a loop icon on my mouse, and I'm able to just click and just drag it out and make more measures. Okay? If I don't want it to be that long, I will go to the bottom and drag it back in. Okay, uh, you can also just click on it and copy it, put the playhead where you want it to go, and then paste. That's another thing that you can do. Um, okay, down here, so I got a few tracks. Uh, down here, I created a new track. I went track, new track, and I created a software instrument, and that's basically, those are the options, by the way. Um, you can plug your guitar in, which is basically you just got... Uh, some sort of user face that has a quarter inch or mic that goes into the USB. Um, real instrument is basically just a, a microphone that you have or the microphone that's built into your actual computer. And software instrument is basically the, the loops and everything that came with this. Now, what I was going to show you with this is I'm not a piano player, um, you know, but it, it has a this like neat little piano thing, and you can adjust the uh, the keys or where actually in the keyboard you are. But right now it's in um, middle C and so if I wanted to start recording I would just this is record enabled so it's it's highlighted red and once I hit this it'll count me off and and why it'll count me off is I have metronome in metronome in so I can hear the clicker and I also have a count in so that basically will give me like one two three four and then the music will start so I can just not be you know it's not right away into the music all right so if you th those are great features to have and me as a musician, like you know, that's what we do in the recording studio. Is they count it off, and then you get like a what's called a pre-roll um, into it. So basically, if I record, you hear that click, and then it starts. So then I can go, and I can also have this uh, connect to the eighth notes, which I'm doing now. I'm obviously not a piano player. All right, and then I would hit the play button again and stop. Now, it recorded what I did, which is absolutely a horrible track. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not a piano player. Uh, I'm a drummer and a guitar player. Um, but you can see it recorded these little kind of MIDI kind of dots, and those are my horrific notes that I made. But I just wanted to give you the idea that it, it, it records in real time. And what I did is uh, I actually have it snapping to eighth notes. So it will do that automatically for it. So it's there. This is where I was talking, and then this is where it comes back in. All right, so there you go. You don't want to hear that horribleness again. Um, so there you go. And then actually, if you wanted to take another track like this, you can uh, click on this area here, and then it becomes the audio editor. Now you have the I you have the options to change the pitch, which is change. Um, like if I went uh, if I change the pitch higher, it'll go ah, it'll just change it. Uh, you know the the uh, my pitching. Um, this is the tuning, so like kind of auto tune, and yeah, uh, if you if you you can just click inside here and select um, certain parts of the track, and then you're able to uh, change your tuning. And uh, I think that's about it. You know, it, it it's just a it's a straight through thing. Uh, oh, um, this is your editor right here. So if you don't want to see that, you just want to see the tracks. You just turn this off, and then turn it back on. Um, down here, it's kind of important actually. Uh, I go by measures. 
um, and that that's this calculator here. Um, you can change it by time, so you can see what time you're at, actually at, and you can see um, the tuner, and you can see the project information. Um, here's your volume, and here is the tracks browser. Here's the information, and here's your media browser. And that's it. Hope this helped. Have a good day.